even though many 5G wireless deployments are still in progress around the world, many in the industry are turning their thoughts to 6G wireless and what it could mean for applications, devices, and future technologies. Despite estimates that 6G won't be widespread until 2030, there's still a lot to learn about the technology. We're going to talk about 6G and what consumers can expect on this episode of Today in Tech. Welcome to Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Joining me on the show today is Jack Gold. He is the president and principal analyst for J. Gold Associates. Welcome back to the show, Jack. Always good to have you here. Thanks, Keith. Good to be here. Uh, you are th- right in the thick of all of the stuff that's going on with 6G, right? Like, I think you just got back from a symposium down in Washington, D.C. Um, when, you, when you told me about this, I was like, wow, 6G, it's like, that's, that's coming. Uh, it is, you know, and, and, and it's kind of under the covers right now because we don't really expect it until, as you said, about 2030. Yeah. Uh, it's usually a, a decade between uh, old G and new G, <laughs> or next G. Uh, but uh, people are working on it right now, and we're going to probably see uh, some sort of 6G effort in the probably two to three year time frame. So 06, 07, 08 kind of, of time frame. Okay. Uh, and, and 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 that's pretty typical. We did we saw the same thing with five because we saw, um, you know, some some preliminary uh, instances of of five G take off well before it was deployed to the world. Yeah. Okay. Let's um let's jump into a little bit of the overview for for those viewers that might not uh you know follow it as much as you do, uh, or if they're not as technically into the technology as much as as we are. Um, can you give me an overview of the the, the types of things that we'll be seeing with six G? Uh, we can go into some some estimated speeds and feeds and things like that, or and then I want to talk about some of the applications. So, um, what are the big highlights of of what's going to happen with six G compared to what we've got now with five G? Yeah, you know that. Uh, to be honest, that's still TBD. Uh, a okay. lot of what we're going to get with six G uh, is is yet to be determined, uh, and it's going to depend on a number of things. So, number one, of course, is always spectrum. The more spectrum, the higher the speed. Yep. Um, the question is, where are we going to find spectrum? So people are looking at, at, at terahertz and, and really, really high frequencies. Um, that's one area where we can expand some uh, some of the, uh, the the spectrum that we need. But the other area, and this is going to be a big area uh, in, in, in 6G, is going to be uh, spectrum sharing. And, and that's really uh, thinking about it. Well, think about it this way. Um, in a real world ex- example, you know, you're you're driving to wherever you're driving to, you're driving to the airport, you're driving your kids to school, yep. and you want to take the, the best route possible, and you get on Waze, and Waze looks at what's going on from a traffic perspective and picks the best road for you to get there. Uh, we're going to see a similar kind of capability in 6G where spectrum is shared with the military, shared with satellites, shared with all kinds of things, maybe even shared with TV signals. Um, and, and you're going to need a, a significant amount of... AI-based uh, capability to make all of that happen, and that's where that's I think where a lot of the work we're seeing take place right now is is is, is going on behind the scenes. Uh, the other area that I think will be very important is uh, a lot of 6G capabilities that we're talking about will be around quality of service, will be around more of the network slicing kinds of capabilities that we're talking about in 5G now. And a lot of it will help carriers be more efficient. Uh, and, and the reason that's important from a consumer perspective is if they're more efficient and using the spectrum, then in theory, at least, uh, they should be able to lower their overall costs and lower my overall costs for subscription services. So uh, it's, it's still an evolving um, situation. There isn't a lot yet to uh, hang your hat on around 6G. Uh, but we'll see, we're probably going to see more in the next couple of years uh, as this gets uh, redefined. So Jack, from an applications perspective, what uh, can we expect? Yeah, so you'll, you'll see more of the same uh, that we're seeing in 5G, but m- more of more of the same. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is, it's still going to be a, a quality of service issue. We're still gonna wanna do um, 
a better job, a better job of of for for some applications of making sure they get connected and 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 aren't overloaded by you know three thousand Twitter users or X users these days. Um, so that's from a safety perspective, for instance, uh, you know, fire, police, ambulance services. Um, you're going to see a lot more IoT capability. Uh, and that's going to be uh, because we're going to be able to slice the networks even more finely than we can with 5G. And in fact, for, in most cases, um, network slicing, which was, which was going to be a, a major promise of 5G, hasn't really taken place because a lot of the network operators don't have an updated core network that they can make it work with right now. Uh, T-Mobile is doing a lot in that space, but Verizon starting to, and AT and AT and T are starting to in, in this country, and of course there's stuff going on in Europe as well. But uh, that requires a complete redo of the the um, the core network, and a lot of 5G in, in in this country, especially and in other parts of the world. Are still based on an LTE core network, which which doesn't give you all the capabilities. So you'll see those kinds of of, of situations. Um, you're going to see a lot more um, uh, edge uh, capability. Um, we're starting to see some of that with 5G, but 6G will bring a lot more of that online because as they update update their networks, uh, the carriers will be able to put local processing capability. At, at the edge, whether that's at the tower or whether that's at a, you know, a, a central point that will uh, push applications towards us. Uh, you'll see AR, VR kinds of situations where you need a lot more. Um, it, the issue with, with AR, VR really is, is latency, right? You've got to get it below at, at least 10 uh, 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 milliseconds, but probably more like five or, th or three milliseconds to really, you know, not give me a headache for using it. So those are some of the applications we're going to see. And there are going to be a lot of other things, um, um, you know, car stuff, C2, VX will be coming on, on board. Uh, you know, millimeter wave will be extended to terahertz wave. Um, and, and so it, it, there's a lot of stuff that, that people are talking about. Uh, we'll, we'll still have to see where, where it all, all shakes out. Yeah, on the, on the spectrum sharing part, um, is that a problem? Is that going to be a problem if they have to share spectrum? Because anytime you hear the, the the sharing of spectrum, you just start thinking of interference and potential problems there. But it, is it is it more that technology can fix it for the for the sharing part? Um, I'm also hearing things about artificial intelligence being used in, within the network. Is a absolutely. So AI is going to be a huge component of 6G across the board. It's already started in 5G. Uh, there are uses for AI, for uh, traffic management, for being able to turn parts of the network on and off when it's not being used to keep power down, to make it more green. Uh, we're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, but but clearly, AI is going to be a major component in frequency sharing and spectrum sharing uh, because it needs to be very fast and very efficient. It also needs to be able to monitor what's going on. So you see a lot more monitoring of network. In theory, network sharing, spectrum sharing can be problematic, right? If if you're trying to do something and right. it's, you know, if it's, I don't know, a, a military system radar um, that's trying to find a, an incoming missile or something, uh, you, you you can't afford to share a network and not, not have it when you need it. Yeah. Uh, or or you're or you're you're an aircraft, you know, your commercial aircraft, United or American or Delta or, or JetBlue flying over Boston. You 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 can't uh, not have the network available. So a lot of it is going to be in determining through AI how well we can actually share the network. And and I think what you'll see is that the government will get involved with this. All governments, not just the U.S. but but around the world, will get involved and say, okay, we really need to have. You know, a a ninety nine point nine 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 percent assurance that you're not going to screw something else up, uh, and that's where AI comes in. Can we achieve that? Yet to be seen. Right. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, what I've noticed on five G, for example, too, is that there was a survey out that a lot of consumers don't necessarily understand 5G or feel like they're, they're getting any benefits from it. Uh, it did feel like that 5G 
was one of those technologies that was aimed more for businesses and, and large companies for or industrial applications. Um, are we going to see a, a switch back to consumer-focused and consumer-heavy uh, applications for, for 6G, or is it going to be more of the same that, that we got from 5G? I think it'll be, honestly, I think it'll be more of the same. I th- one of the problems with 5G from a consumer's perspective is that the carriers really didn't roll out 5G very efficiently, mm-hmm. very effectively. There were a lot of consumers that were getting uh, all they needed from LTE, from 4G. And then you roll out 5G and, and I don't notice any benefit. W- what is it doing for me? Will will my text send any faster? Right. No. Will I be able to, to see Instagram faster? No. TikTok will work about the same. So I think that's what you're 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 seeing. 5G does have benefits for the carriers, right? Um, and and and, a, and the consumers. If you're doing really data heavy applications, the AR VR applications, for instance, you couldn't do on 4G. Yeah. Um, some video you could you probably couldn't do. Um, Zoom video would have been fine, but you know some some heavy duty uh, video kinds of things. Um, so the the real issue is. It's in it, 5G to a lot of consumers has, has been invisible. It, 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 you tell me I've got 5G and that's great, but what is it doing for me that I wasn't doing before? Right. I, and I think the, the biggest thing I've seen with some of the marketing materials that I get or, or some of the stats I see is 5G for home wireless. So it almost is like 5G for home broadband, you know, going up against fiber optic or DSL or those types of, of broadband connections for the home, I have seen a big push for fixed wireless access uh, with 5G. And so I would imagine that would also then um, carry over to the 6G as well. But from a consumer standpoint, if I've already got a good broadband connection, um, I don't necessarily think I need to switch to a wireless one, right? Well, and that's true. The, 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 there's a couple of issues with that, right? One is that the the uh, the wired carriers, the wired service providers, keep raising their prices, uh, and so uh, you know companies. I, I mean, T-Mobile's been very aggressive, right? Yeah. Trying to get everyone to sign up for fixed wireless access at, at fifty dollars a month when everyone else is charging you know the eighty ninety dollars a month for 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 their uh, connections. Now, certainly something like FiOS is is far superior. Um, from a speed perspective and from a reliability perspective, but still, if if T-Mobile's got uh, or any of the carriers have uh, excess 5G capacity, and they can serve it to you on a fixed wireless access node at a at a, a good price, then why not? Uh, also, it, it's also uh, very attractive for remote areas. So there are a lot of areas in this country that aren't wired uh, for you know for fiber. Or, or, or even high-speed coax. Right, right. And so fixed wireless access makes it very attractive in rural areas where, you know, the, the houses are a mile apart. Yeah, I do um, I do feel spoiled by the fact that I have Fios at my house. Um, our neighborhood was very fortunate. I, I mean, it's a suburban-ish area. Uh, right. But, you know, I, I do tend to forget that there are lots of homes that are still uh, connected through older technologies. Right. Exactly. Exactly right. And and yeah. So I'm spoiled as well. I have the same. So, uh, but but I also do a lot of traveling. You know, we go up to Maine often, and and there are places in Maine where you know cell towers are 20 miles apart. I'm exaggerating, but you know, far apart. And and you're you're not going to get uh, a cable run either because homes are very very sparse up there. So uh, fixed wireless access is actually a great example of making. Uh, are getting people connected that that probably couldn't otherwise. Right now, uh, speaking of towers, do do uh, the carriers have to? Ins- will they have to install new towers to uh, provide for the cells, or can they can they install six G over existing towers? Um, I, I'm just assuming that the cells the cell size is going to be smaller with six G than five G because again, as you keep going up in your frequency, your range is going to go different, right? Or am I am I messing that up? Well, there, there's, so there's a couple of issues there. Number yeah. one is that even with 6G, 5G won't get turned off. Right. 5G will be around for a long, long time, right. just as 4G is. And so can you reuse some of the cell towers? Yes. Uh, will you have to change out some of the equipment? Probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll have to put up new antennas and the like. Um, but in, in some cases, you'll probably have to put up a, a new tower uh, just to uh, keep from inter- interfering with the old ones. Um 
towers is is a, is a whole different issue because most of the carriers now are are actually getting rid of their towers. They're 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 selling them off and re and renting them from companies that are tower management companies. Okay. And and so uh, that's an interesting discussion in and of itself. But but basically, it's it's the carrier saying we don't want to have to deal with permitting. We don't want to have to deal with maintenance. We don't want to have to deal with any of the stuff that that towers make us do. Here's a company that's willing to do it. You know, it's like a, a, a I guess it's like a food management company. And if you don't want to, you know, you, you got a cafeteria in your company, but you don't want to start your own kitchen. You go out and get a food management company. Right. Same right. as going on with towers. So with six G. The frequency perspective, of course, you're going to have to have new equipment uh, if we have higher frequencies. You'll have to have new antennas put up. Uh, it's not clear that we'll be able to uh, re reuse the towers. Probably we will. Uh, but the, the equipment that's there now will be around for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, so as we go from 5G to 6G over the next seven or so years, uh, again, not knowing exactly what the standard might be, what frequency they're going to use, et cetera, et cetera, what are some of the challenges that, that you think carriers are going to face? And, um, or what else? You know, is it going to have to be government oversight with a lot of stuff? What are the challenges as we get to 6G? So there's a lot of challenges. Uh, number one is you know, just defining what it's going to be. Uh, because there are so many ways, uh, so many directions it can go. The second challenge is, you know, 5G ha already has an awful lot of capabilities. Not not all of them are implemented yet. Yeah. But uh, there are a lot of things in the standard that are, are very uh, impressive from a, a industrial and a consumer perspective. Uh, a lot of uh, the carriers still haven't implemented them all. And so a lot of the effort's going to be in getting 5G up and running fully before you get to 6G. Right. And that's still probably going to take a couple of years. So uh, th that's that's a, a challenge. The, the, the other challenge, I think, from a carrier perspective with 6G is going to be, do I optimize it for me or do I optimize it for you? And what I mean by that is uh, 6G could be optimized for carriers in the sense that it could be made uh, more energy efficient, that right. it could uh, reduce the operations operating costs of, of the carrier, that it could use AI to really lower um, the overall burden that carriers have in managing the networks, which is pretty significant, right? Um, or do I concentrate 6G on giving consumers AR VR stuff, which is going to be a big deal, maybe. Right. We'll see. That's a whole other discussion. Um, and, uh, uh, and 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 car stuff or, or, you know, satellite communications or whatever it's going to be. So it's really going to take, it's going to take another probably a couple of years before all of this, all of this gets sorted out. And it's not clear yet where the pendulum will swing, whether it will be more towards carrier benefit or consumer benefit. Or somewhere in the middle. Yeah, and I, I think if you talk to most consumers, they'd be like, well, I don't care what the carrier is going to get. Just tell me when I'm going to be able sure. to play, you know, on my virtual headset out at the at the mall. Um, yeah, but but they do care that their prices are going up. Right, right. Yes, if, if, and, if, you, and, could, and, if you could tell me that my price will go down, right. then, then I would be interested. Right. Yeah. Well, it probably won't go down, but it may stay the same, right? <laughs> if their true. costs go down... You know, their profit market. Their profits go up. Yeah, yeah. Nothing ever comes down, right? Uh, what 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 were some of the the big themes from this six G symposium? That that like what were what were people excited? Were, were was there a lot of excitement, or was it just uh, more of the same? Was like okay, well, let's get ready for this next technology. What was the feeling at the show? Yeah, I, I think it, a lot of it was ex exploratory. Where are we going to go with this stuff? Yeah. What are some the key minds out there that are thinking about this stuff and what are they thinking about? So what are the, what were the key things that were going on? AI, of course, AI, 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 and AI were, were right. a big theme. Right. Um, as it always is. And, and, and not just in, <laughs> in 6G, but these days AI is, is a big theme for everything. Uh, the other thing, uh, and, and I did a panel with some interesting folks from the government. We, we talked about what the uh, Chips and Science Act will do for 6G. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that people don't often talk about, uh, you know, we, we talk about the CHIPS Act as as throwing a whole lot of money at trying to get chip manufacturing back to the U.S. But one of the things that was in there is a significant amount of money to 
uh, invest in, in networks, including 6G, not exclusively 6G, but including 6G. And so there's a lot of effort to uh, on, the, on the part of the government to try to spur uh, invention, uh, innovation in 6G before, you know, the other guys do yeah. across the pond or, or, or in, in the Far East. Um, and so there was a lot of talk about what that means, a lot of talk about what the uh, semiconductor companies can help do. Uh, certainly from a, there's certainly software that's going to be inv uh, involved because all networks in the future, including 5G, are really software defined networks. They're not just about hardware. So there's a lot of uh, interest in, in how we get to the next phase of semiconductors, how we get to the next phase of, of chips, how we get to the next phase of software uh, en enablement, uh, and, and then, of course, how we utilize AI and management technology to manage all this really complex stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you look at all the applications that are being um, promised for 6G when compared to 5G, it feels like whenever there's a next generation of, of things to talk about, they have to come up with applications that are appealing to a consumer. And I think the problem they've got now with AR, VR is that not a lot of people are interested in it. I guess maybe they, at some point, if they see the benefit of it, then they'll, they'll go, okay, I guess we need this network to do this. Do, do you think that they're going to be riding on, on those types of applications, or is there something that maybe we haven't thought about, maybe uh, a generative AI type of portable device, but technically you've already got that with your phone? Like, How much of this is hype when you, when you compare the, um, the applications that are being pitched you know, based on your knowledge of 5G, 4G, 3G, et cetera? Yeah. And that's a great question. And so the, the, the question always is, if you build it, will they come? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, and, and, and we found that it, 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 they always have. Right. We, we, as we bring out new technologies, people find a way to use it. Yeah. Um, AR VR is one that we kind of know about right now. It, it, we'll have to see how that all shakes out. There's a lot of issues uh, around making that realistic uh, for consumers, at least. Yeah. Um, industrial less so. There's a lot of use in, uh, use cases in, in industrial that are that are coming online now that will be over the next couple of years as the price comes down. A big part of it right now is price. Yeah. Um, so so those are the kinds of things that are happening. But uh, I, I I expect things in healthcare to show up that we don't know about right now. Uh, you know, I, I expect things in uh, uh, autonomous, all kinds of autonomous vehicles, Yep. not just cars that we talk about, but, you know, tractors and in far farm fields and, uh, you know, robots running around, you know, delivering your food, whatever it's going to be. Um, there's going to be a lot of that capability necessary uh, to be rolled out over the next few years. And 6G could potentially help with that. So uh, I think there's a lot of stuff we don't know about yet. I think a lot of it will will come to bear once we have those kinds of networks in place and people can experiment. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I was looking at when I was uh, doing some of the research on this was um, an article that said that 6G will be able to have wide, wider geographical coverage than 5G and that 6G will basically, quote unquote, cover the whole planet. Is that because they can then, they're looking at space-based or satellite-based uh, transmissions that, that maybe we're not seeing with 5G? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing it now we're, yeah. you know, with the, the LEO satellites, with, with all of the, the technology, you know, um, Musk is putting play, stuff in place with Starlink, uh, AWS is doing something, Microsoft is looking at doing stuff, yeah. Google's looking at stuff. It's all, uh, you know, LEO types of satellites, right? Um, there's no reason why they can't be part of the 6G network. Uh, and, and they probably will be at some point, because again, if we talk about spectrum sharing and network uh, intelligence, you, you, when I use the network, the network will route me over the best means possible for my connection. Right. Uh, whether it's cost, because of cost, whether it's because of, of latency, whether it's because of, because of speed, uh, all of that's going to be managed probably by AI. And it will just put me on where I need to be whenever I need to be it. Now, will it cover the entire planet? Well, we'll see. Um, you right. know, we've heard those kinds of comments before. But it will cover certainly cover a, a wide swath, if not all, of the planet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what's what's the next step then for the people that are following the industry? Is there is there another is there a deadline 
that people are set, or is there a meeting at some point where they all of the industry groups are going to get together and discuss it? Um, I think you mentioned uh, we're two to three years out. Like, what's the what's what what's on your radar? Yeah, so so there there's still a number of meetings that are going on uh, around 6G uh, on, a, on a semi-regular basis. I don't know the entire schedule anymore, but uh, there are <clears throat> excuse me, there are international working groups on 6G. Uh, we will probably see at least a preliminary spec uh, in the next, I would guess, 18 to 24 months Okay, uh, as they work out some of these issues. Uh, that Again, that's preliminary. That's not something that you're going to go out and build uh, network equipment f- yet for, but they'll be able to do some experimentation with it. I think you'll probably see a real spec emerge in probably the next four years or so, give or take. Uh, and that will give people the ability to go out and say, okay, so let's do some, let's build some equipment, let's put some uh, networks in place, and 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 see how well they work. So it, it, it's a it's a longer time frame. Um, there are you know the, 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 they're trying to make sure that the international standards. The other problem, by the way, is that there's disagreement around 60. You know, talked about 60 available around the world. What is 6G in China versus in in uh, Europe versus in the U.S. versus in Australia versus in New Zealand versus yeah. in Russia or whatever? Is there going to be really a, a 6G standard around the world like we do with Wi-Fi? Uh, you know, we're having the same discussions. We had the same discussions with 5G. Uh, and so there's a lot of spectrum issues around that. Uh, it gets very, very complicated. The government's get involved. And so the, you know, the ITU and, and other uh, standards body 3GPP are all trying to figure out how to make this a standard worldwide if they possibly can. Yeah, that brings me and, back and, to the early days of of 3G and and what was it? Uh, I can't remember the acronym. CDMA was one of them, right. and GSMA, you had you had yeah, like four GSMA. or five different competing standards, and then finally they 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 figured right. out how to merge that. So I thought we were beyond that, but it, but uh, it, it's always about spectrum, right? Right. Well, it's about spectrum and it's about companies trying to do their own thing. A country, sorry, trying to do their own thing. You know, China has yep. a, a, an issue with we want to lead in specs, you know, standards. Yeah. Uh, the U.S. does. Europe does. I mean, we were even going back to Wi-Fi. I remember the early days of Wi-Fi. If you if you left the U.S., there are countries where you couldn't use Wi-Fi because they didn't have the spectrum. Right. Or they didn't allow it. You didn't have a license to use it. If you use it, you, get, you know, you got in trouble. The FCC, the equivalent of the FCC came and found you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's going to be more of that. Uh, that's going to get sorted out, I think, eventually. Uh, but it'll probably take a while. That's a, I think that's more political than, you know, technical issues. Yep. And the political issues are always the hard ones to solve. Oh, boy. Um, is, is there always a sense of, of that? companies or countries want to be first or want to be seen as the leaders in this? And, and why is that? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's an arms race, right? It's a technological arms race. I, I don't mean to, you know, say, you know, who's yeah. got the most nukes, right? Yeah. Uh, but, but why is that? Well, Just because pride? it's bragging rights, number one. Yeah. Number two, it's because if I'm first, I can have companies build the equipment that I, that I can sell into the marketplace, right? Okay. Uh, China was a, a leader in 5G deployments, Specifically because they wanted companies like Huawei and ZTE and others to to be major suppliers to the world for equipment, and and they were for a long time. Uh, you know, there's political issues involved, so we won't get into those. But, sure. But that's why you do it. <clears throat> and uh, and frankly, there are no leadership positions for 5G uh, companies, suppliers in the U.S. You know, Ericsson and Nokia are are, are European. Yeah. Right. Who, who in the U.S.? I mean, Cisco's doing some, but there are, really aren't any uh, U.S. companies. So if if the U.S. can lead in the space and they can get, I'm, I'm making this up, right? Yeah. Cisco starting a 5G branch, uh, and they can get ahead of the rest of the world. They're going to sell a lot of equipment. We're going to make a lot of money, and we're going to have a lot of jobs. So, and and bragging rights, right? The U.S. always wants to be first on everything, yeah. and they haven't been, but. They, they're trying to be so do you see that happening or is that going to is it just going to be we're going to just concede to the europeans and the the chinese uh i don't think yeah, it's too we, early to we're speculate. going to concede yeah. it may happen that way yeah um we've got a lot of smart people in the u.s working on this stuff as well you know again the chips act put a lot of money in play yep uh i think it was if i remember correctly 1.5 billion or something along those lines um so we'll see a lot of companies try to uh, 
even startups try to take, take advantage of that. So it it's to be seen where it goes. But, you know, you've got companies like they're not small companies, right? Ericsson, Nokia, Samsung, yep. uh, Huawei, ZTE. Those guys are all playing in the space as well. So we'll have to see how we can make it happen. All right, uh, Jack, thanks thanks for for giving us this update uh, and overview. I know that we're still a far ways out from, from all of this, but um, it's a great uh, starting point. Yeah, it's always good to look at the future. All right, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Keith. That's all the time we have for today's episode. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and add any comments you have below. Join us every week for new episodes of Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Thanks for watching.